come and join me. How are you today? Namaste. I'm wonderful. Thank you, Tony. As I said before, this is going to be epic. Did you see that this thing got reposted at least eight times? And I can't think of a better way to start my week than to be here with you and my two buddies. Oh, that is so, so kind of you. And people watch the replays. So let me introduce you to our other two fantastic guests. And we have the relentlessly helpful LinkedIn nerd, John Isperian. Welcome, John. I'm so privileged to have all of you here with me. How are you today, John? Absolute pleasure to be here, Tony. Thank you for inviting me with such esteemed guests. Yeah, I'm really looking forward to it. Absolutely. It's going to be a real treat with lots of nuggets of gold for everyone. And I have no other than the one and only Kevin D. Turner. So welcome, Kevin. How are you today? Good morning. It's 7.30. Almost. Yeah, it is. <laughs> almost, almost. So it's seven thirty for you, Kevin, but it's much earlier for you, Jeff, isn't it? So you got your pint of coffee. Great. Yeah. So it's it's C for coffee, and uh, have you got coffee as well, Kevin? Yeah. Oh yeah, always. Okay. So <laughs> just a pinch between the cheek and gum. Right. Okay. So skull, and brother. we. Sorry, Jeff. I said school, brother. Sorry. <laughs> so we have got so many people joining us today. I'm just going to give a quick shout out to a few people that um, have been here regular. So we've got Susan Brooks, Brenda, Sarah McMillian from Ohio. Let us know where you are calling from, as where you're watching from as well. Deborah, Debbie from Florida and uh, Brenda. Uh, OK, well, hopefully you're going to be able to connect. We've got Melody from Massachusetts. We've got Marcia from the US as well. We've got UK representation from Anne. We've got Isle of Man, Mike Cotton. I'm not going to go through all of them. I just wanted to give you a feel that we have global attendance here for all of you esteemed guests today. So we have Trevor. Thank you, Trevor, for joining us again. Marjolaine, uh, Stella, thank you. Um, Stella Tatiana and uh, please just keep those comments coming because I know that uh, the guests that I have in the space today you know will come back at a later stage and uh, make sure that they you know answer any questions or anything that uh, that you would like to ask so thank you so much Shelley, Brenda, Bill, Tatiana, Lisa, Salima, Catherine, the list goes on. I'm just scrolling and scrolling and scrolling and scrolling. And no doubt I'm going to be scrolling a little bit more. So we've got Brazil, Sweden, Netherlands, India, as well as UK and London. So that is great. And we've got uh, Daniel from uh, Maryland, USA, as well as Ireland. Right. OK, so get those questions ready for this fantastic hour. So... LinkedIn has, has kind of like been one of my favorite platforms. So what we've got is we've got Jeff, who is really going to share some of his experience over nearly 20 years you've been on this platform. So Jeff's going to answer some of those questions around that, get them ready. And then we've got John, the I call him the LinkedIn detective because he's always looking at, you know, experiments and looking into things. And even now, even just now in the green room, there was all this debating about, you know, this experiment that he's going to be doing. And I'm sure he's going to be sharing that with you very, very shortly. And we have Mr. Kevin D. Turner, branding, not blanding. And we're going to ask you all about that very, very shortly. So he's going to be sharing with you the approach that you need to take around your brand on LinkedIn. And hopefully I'm going to be weaving in. Um, sprinkles of fairy dust and sharing my journey as well because we are all learning and we're all learning together some of them are 20 years ahead of us you know and others um, may be just starting on their journey so we're all gonna be traveling on this journey together so Jeff let's come over to you first of all you joined the platform in 2004 and I've had you in this hot seat before so do correct me if I'm wrong, you know, but I understand that, you know, where you came from in the US, there were limited opportunities for you and you used IT to elevate you out of the area and, and look at other opportunities. And LinkedIn was one of the places that you landed. Tell us a little bit about LinkedIn. Is it the platform to be on? 
Well, it it uh, it is. Uh, I'm I did join in May of 2004. Um, I think one small little tidbit that, that people need to understand is that LinkedIn actually was launched in May of 2003. So I got I got there within the first year. But within that first year, and people may not understand this, within that first year, there were only 600,000 members. It only, you know, only in the first year, there was only about 600,000 members. And I know that because I've taken a look beneath the covers as well. As a matter of fact, one of the things that when you looked at your old, old time, back away URL on LinkedIn, it actually used to have a number at the end of it. And at the end of that number, that was your member number. Now it doesn't show anymore, okay? But it does show in the code that is behind your actual profile, uh, pro profile website, okay? Your profile URL. So people can still find it. I still use that IT geekness to go out there and, and go out there and find it by looking at people's numbers. So I can give a, give a, a, a range about what it was, you know, what, what, what they were, when they joined. But now, of course, you know, 19 years later than me and 20, almost 20 years later for LinkedIn, there's over 902 million wow. out there on LinkedIn. Yeah. And that number go is going up by, honestly, I think that the statistics I just recently heard is like seven people per second. It's going up by seven more people per second. So you can do the math about how many seconds in a day and how many se you know, uh, seconds in an hour and how many hours in a day, et cetera. It, it's going up by huge numbers. And, and so that's amazing to me. Now, that's, that's fantastic. So why is this? Why do you think that those numbers are so huge by the second? And why do you feel that this is the platform to be on out of all the other social media platforms? This is really a business platform what do you feel what's your it, view on that it really is a business platform it really didn't start out that way to some degree it started out as a recruiting platform it's, ah, okay. I mean, there used to be a stigma and there still is maybe just a little but there used to be a stigma about the fact that if you were on linkedin oh no you don't want to be on linkedin mm -hmm. because if your employer finds out you're looking for a job okay, okay. And, and it's ridiculous now that's just not true and I think, again, originally, it was really just another place that would put your online resume. That's what it was originally. Now, it is so much more than that. It is really a, a huge networking platform now. And it's amazing to me to see it really started as very straight-laced, very professional, did not want to seem anything at all like Facebook, you know, in the, in the old days. You know, and stayed that way for quite a while, but then it's it morphed into a much more business platform, especially B two B business networking. That was it got a reputation like that, but now it's actually come back to more even really nowadays. Again, it's morphed into at least a different product as well to allow people to do B two C. Okay, so business to consumers is, is coming on. And also, good. also people. You know, I see that they're building such great relationships and they miss it if they're not, you know, if they're not on the platform or stayed away for a few weeks yeah. or, or whatever um, that is. So that was the way it worked for me. I didn't honestly use it when I was in a job. I actually when I retired at the beginning of 2008, even though I'd been on LinkedIn for almost four years, I asked my network, I want to network with this professional environment, I'm, I'm, going to be, I'm going to be retired. And when I asked my network what the best platform to be on was from a networking, from a professional standpoint, every single one of them said LinkedIn, which is why I started yeah. to get to, to know LinkedIn much more. Because I, I literally let them sit there and do nothing with it for almost three years. Okay, so. It, well, I, I, I personally have been because. on the platform for about 10 years but I've really only started over the last few years getting to grips with it and taking it seriously, you know? Mm -hmm. So, um, and I, and maybe there's an opportunity later I can share a little bit of that. So well, if you are, join, if you're joining us, do drop in the chat. If you have a specific question for Jeff around this particular area, tell us when you joined, when you joined, how long you've been on the platform, what you have come on the platform for, whether it's relationship building, building your business, networking. We want to know because I've got the experts here that can help you take that forward. And it's not just this hour. 
You know, you will have access to them outside of this. You can follow them, connect with them and ask them those questions. I'm sure they will not mind and they'll help you as much as they can. And if there's anything I can share about my experience as well, then I'm happily um, I'm happy to do that, too. So so we've got a couple of comments in there. So we've got Angus is, is saying that rec recruitment elements remain your hidden headline as in your last job title. So, you know, yes, recruitment recruitment yes but also it's about your attitude if, if that's what people are thinking it's about recruitment they come on to the platform and think that people are just gonna all these jobs are gonna land jeff so what have you got to say about that well i i think it again from yes yes linkedin still makes 60 percent of its revenue from recruiting services so yes that that element has stayed there but again it's become so much much more and 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 I think that's a good segue into John, actually, because John actually used to do a lot of different social media. And then at one point in time, John said, you know where I'm going to put all my eggs is in this one basket. And that's going to be LinkedIn. And I think he's been very successful at that. So that, that's a good segue into what he can, he can tell us about that as well. OK, so, yes, we'll move over to John just shortly. So um, what have we got? Right. OK, so there's a question from Daniel. Sorry, I'm just doing random questions here. Our hashtags dead on LinkedIn. I track 900 HT followers counts daily and the count stopped updating on the 21st of the 3rd. I don't know. Is that something that you can answer, Jeff? Or maybe that's over to, to My John? My opinion would be, would be no, I don't think it's dead. Mine are still working. I'm still getting things in my feed based on hashtags. My, my follower count on hashtags, the hashtag the LinkedIn guru is still going up uh, slowly, but, but consistently. So... I don't think it's broken. That could have been a, a technical glitch that the numbers just stopped updating for him shortly. Okay, so, so we're going to bring in John and Kevin on this particular matter. But yeah. uh, let's hear from Mike. He says, I'm here to build the awareness of my business offerings and to connect with ideal clients. So, John, Kevin, have you got any, any real um, contributions that you want to add into this before we move into your section, John? Uh, can I just say that hashtag counts are not broken for me I, I keep an eye on my linkedin learner lounge and that's still going up and i can see in the comments a few people are asking how to find out when you joined linkedin um you can if you go into the settings and privacy through desktop so the me menu and go into settings and privacy there's a data privacy section on the left and the top item within there uh includes a load of timestamps of when you did certain actions so if you go to the final page of that uh, that will show you when you joined and for me it was uh, it was november 2008 and i think i was member 34 million but um i didn't do anything with linkedin for eight not years anyone's counting not anyone's <laughs> counting you know yeah. jeff but that's a great point that john that john gave us that where you can get the exact date that you joined here recently, one of the new features that's popped out, sorry to step on a new feature, uh, Kevin, but, uh -oh. but but one of the new features that popped out is under your profile, if you click the more button, you can click about this profile and you can also see the year that you joined or anyone else's as well. So that's okay. a nice, e nice, easy feature to see there too. Okay, so um, those of you that are wanting to, jo um, to uh, find out that question, find out the answer to that about when you joined, some of them are sharing 2004, uh, um, yeah, thank you for those of you that are joining us, some from uh, New York. And, um, you know, we've also got new people that have joined just a year ago. So their experience is going to be very, very different. So now, before we move over to John, I want to give Kevin an opportunity to share anything on this theme, because I know that you're not shy, Kevin, but you've been <laughs> very patient here, haven't you? The coffee's just about ready to kick in. No. <laughs> okay. You know, back to that hashtag uh statement, you know, things on LinkedIn for every one of us at times stop working. Best thing often is wait a couple of days and it will usually start working again. They roll out so many features and last year was over 100. This year we're already at 70. What? We're in the fourth month. When they're doing that, they're figuring out how all this fits and works within all this spaghetti coding that is LinkedIn that was built over time. It was never planned to be what it is. We talked about it was a resume uh, holder before. Now it is a just total network career experience, right? 
they didn't plan that. So all these bits and pieces of coding, they start to conflict. So when you see something stop working, don't panic, give it a couple of days. It usually will come back. But if it doesn't at that point, that's when you go ahead and set up that help request and maybe you've spotted a new bug and they'll get yeah. it solved. Because uh, I, I, I noticed that a little bit with LinkedIn as well. And, and we're going to kind of come into John's area, really, because I noticed they try things, they do it for a little while, and then all of a sudden it's just disappeared and you think, well, what's going on here? So, um, John, do you want to just take us through a little bit of that? And then I'm going to bring in some of the comments from these fabulous people that are joining us. We've got Kevis, we've got Aloyton, um as well. We've got Barbara, Shipria, Terence, Chris. So, uh, John, and then we'll, yeah. we'll um, come so, to those. Just on that point you've j just made, think of LinkedIn as one big beta test. Uh, mm -hmm. It's an A-B test that's constantly ongoing. And what LinkedIn looks like to you might not look the same to what it looks like to the next person, which makes training sessions quite challenging because <laughs> you might have a feature that your trainees don't or yeah. vice, often vice versa. Um, so, for example, I, I, just the other day, I got these giant colorful buttons whenever I make a post then, you know, add an image, add a video, and, and it's a big, colorful experience. But then I've seen a screenshot of someone else's who's got something else again. Uh, and I guess that LinkedIn are just testing how people engage with these things and then choosing the most successful candidate. And that's the, the, that's their way of learning what works for most people, because the, the, the end game for LinkedIn is 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 about increasing their bottom line. And that means getting more eyeballs onto the platform and to keep more of those eyeballs there for longer so that those people find more value in the platform, maybe buy one of the expensive packages, see more adverts. So the way to work out how LinkedIn really operates is to follow the money. <laughs> mm -hmm. and, and then that gives you an insight into their motivations. And if you can play to that a little bit, that that's your chance of being probably most successful uh, on the platform. So for example, you know, what, in talking about the algorithm, um, you know what's going to keep people most engaged for longest. If you can do those things, then then your content stands a good chance of of winning. So, if people spend more time watching videos or reading through multi page documents, that keeps them on the platform much longer than just you know a static image. Let's say, for example, well, it stands to reason that doing more of those things. Uh, will get people to stay longer and okay. therefore LinkedIn will reward you. So I imagine as well that it's going to be quite, sometimes it's, it can be difficult um, if some if you've got a feature and you're doing some training and that, you know, the group haven't got that feature, sometimes just explaining how it came about. Sometimes you'll know and other times you'll, you won't know because it just appeared and, and you know. Sometimes so it appears during your training <laughs> and you've never heard about it. <laughs> like, yeah. Uh, yeah. And this is <laughs> yeah. something we've and, never and heard before. You know, a lot of LinkedIn activities is quite secret to us, the, the end users. So, you know, I might have gone and recorded a video on how something works. And the next day, the whole system changes. And, and there was very little notice of that or, or often no notice of it. And maybe it appears in the help pages a couple of months later. But by which time, all of the people in the know have already, you know, gotten used to that new so, thing. So... So this kind of buys into into my kind of my kind of thing, which is about the fact that um, things are always evolving and changing. And anyone that says to you really that they know everything that they need to know about LinkedIn because they're the expert, you know, and, um, you know, it's not the case because these gentlemen here have been practicing and know and have experienced LinkedIn over the years. So they're going to be ahead of, some of the some of the others and even they're not in a position none of you are in a position to say that we know everything about this I, I don't even think linkedin has a <laughs> linkedin expert well, they, well, there you go there you go because actually they rely on people like yourselves you know i've been i've been one of the beta testers as well so they rely on people like yourselves to advise them as well you know and uh, and do so so much on the platform so let's um the way that I do this, I love to bring the comments in from uh, from the, the the people that are joining us because it's our conversation with them. So who have I got? Um, you know, we've got uh, Shipriya. Thank you for organising this with the most powerful squads on LinkedIn. 
See, and um, who else have we got? Oh, there's so much to choose from. Uh, who else have we got? We've got... Um... Okay, so um, we've got Michelle who's saying she's here and working on building my insurance business to help doctors with their malpractice insurance. I would love some advice. So maybe, you know, you can reach out to any one of these these uh, these dons, you know, on the, on that, so they can give you some advice at a later point. We've also got Daniel, uh, you know, Angela saying that she joined in 2006, you know, and we've also got Sabrina who's saying that it's changing and, uh, yeah, change right for me while I'm teaching a workshop. So, okay, so we've got other people that are just saying hello, Erica, Alicia, Hannah, um, Kenneth, thank you so much for joining us. And Kenneth is saying, who is another LinkedIn as well, another LinkedIn guru. So LinkedIn seems to operate in silos. One group doesn't seem to know what another group is doing and they're doing it. Okay, so thank you so much. And Let LinkedIn me just rewind back a little bit. Sorry, Kevin. LinkedIn takes pride in that approach. The siloed approach, the almost competitive nature of their design teams. And LinkedIn will tell you that it was a statement, I think it was by Tomer that said, we might not get it right, but we do it our way. Okay. Which to me is a little scary, right? Well, <laughs> if you know you didn't get it right, but yeah. you're going to do it your way as if it was right anyway. It absolutely is. So so let me just take it back a little bit because I want to hear back from you, Kevin. But first of all, I want to ask Jeff, how did you get the name LinkedIn Guru oh. and how's that hashtag working for you? And I'm going to ask you, Kevin, and John, you the same question. The, the hashtag works great. Let's start with that because I often tell folks that want to find my stuff to go out to Google and Google hashtag the LinkedIn Guru. Okay, because if you Google Jeff Young, I can almost guarantee you with a name like Jeff Young, you're going to come up with a ton more people than me. If I get lucky, maybe I'll show up on the first page. Maybe not. Because when you Google Jeff Young, you find a, a former guitar player from Megadeth and that ain't me. <laughs> okay. I'm sorry. Even though, even though you were listening my, to my the My hair used to be that long in the 70s, but not anymore. <laughs> even though you were listening to the intro music and I, it was almost like you were playing oh, the yeah, I, I, I did you, Jeff. Yeah, I, I, you saw that. Yeah, I knew you'd see that. Okay, so, so the way that the LinkedIn Guru thing came around very briefly is that when I first got onto LinkedIn and started to really want to do something with it, which was when I retired in 2008, I started... I figured that the best way for me to learn how to use LinkedIn was for me to start teaching LinkedIn so that I'd learn it myself. Oh, and thanks. that's exactly where the LinkedIn teacher comes from. Because if you look up guru in the dictionary, you see the word teacher. But the re reason the, the name guru stuck is that I had a friend of mine that actually had come to, I used to do as many as six seminars a, a, a month easily. And I had a friend of mine that came to six or eight of my seminars. And I don't know what that says about him or about me. Maybe he's a slow learner or maybe I'm a, not that good a teacher. Well, I don't think so because we're dealing with LinkedIn, first of all. So you can't learn it all in one session. But after one of those sessions, he comes up to me, shakes his finger at me and says, you know what, Jeff? You're a real guru at this. And I went, guru. Yeah. You like that word. No, that's, that's fantastic. Thank and you so I much for sharing. Like guru meant teacher that way. Thank you so much for sharing, Jeff. Um, that's amazing. So really, what are we saying to those people that are watching now? Get, you know, and this is part of what Kevin's going to be talking about in terms of brands. Be identified, Absolutely. you know. So I'm going to move over to John. Relentlessly helpful LinkedIn nerd. Relentlessly helpful. <laughs> Tell us about it. Don't be a douche canoe. You know, <laughs> all of these things that, that we can associate you with. Do you want to just yeah. tell us very briefly what... Uh... Yeah, Re Relentlessly Helpful was a stroke of luck. I was on stage with my mentor, Mark Schaefer, and he asked me an unplanned question, which is, how are you going to remain relevant in a world full of options? And I said, I'm going to create relentlessly helpful content. And that moment was caught on camera, and it stuck with me, and that was June 2017. Uh, and really everything about the way I show up online has been in service of that promise. And, and the brand is really just the promise. 
Um, and I'm trying to fulfill that every day with with content that helps people. You, do, you know, you I started that well. as copywriting, but really it's it's all focused on on LinkedIn support now. Um, and so, yes, you know, just in the same way that Jeff has got LinkedIn guru, um, uh, you know, and, and Kevin's got branding, not blanding. Having that little hook, it might sound a bit gimmicky, but if you can just do anything to give you an edge that makes you memorable, then you've got a better chance of being chosen versus the next guy who's doing exactly the same thing. So it's a useful thing to have in your toolkit. And I just so happen to have Tony's fairy dust, which I sprinkle out. Mm -hmm. I don't even know where, I haven't got a fabulous story like you guys, but uh, you know, it just, you know, I was sitting with a client one day and she was just so distraught and distressed about, about something. And I thought, how can I help her in this moment? And I just said, I'm going to throw you some fairy dust. She caught it. And instantaneously, she was just smiling. And I thought, ah, oh, so this is really a thing, you know? Mm-hmm. And then I, I just started using it. And I went to meet some people from LinkedIn. And they actually said to me, they said to somebody else, this is Tony, and she's got fairy dust. And I think, I thought, I didn't even realize people were paying attention. And then someone else said to me, fairy dust personified. And I realized that, well, actually, that's me now. That's what they know me as. So thank you so much, Jeff and John. Let's hear from Kevin, you know, about your branding, not blanding, because that's your hashtag. That's your thing, isn't it? So tell us about that for a moment. Absolutely. You know, it it, it actually came from, I've optimized over 4,800 profiles on LinkedIn and trained over 12,000 people. I used to do it as a kind of a give back. Now I actually charge for it, which is nice too, pays bills, right? (laughs) But it came from the process. And what the first thing I would notice is people would build a profile and what they would do is they would just throw everything they've got into it or they would throw nothing into it, right? One or the other. Yeah. And they figured out the people on the other side will figure this out. That's all I got to do chronological dump, throw it all in there. They'll figure it out. They'll know exactly what I do. And to me, that was blanding, right? It was too much. It was like, if you're making a soup and you're throwing everything in it, it's going to taste like nothing at the end, right? You've got to really look at what are those ingredients that are tasty, that people will want to come back for. And that's how you kind of build that brand out. And so to me, it made absolute sense. I, I trademarked that some time back and, uh, you know, eliminating uh, personal blanding. Organizational blanding is another kind of step in the process, but it's about getting that message right that takes you to where you want to go. So you got to know a couple things, right? Where, where do you want to go? What's your goal? And what is it that you can bring to the table that possibly nobody else is doing or that you do better than anybody else? And you build that into that Absolutely. brand. Absolutely come up with these great messages, uh, LinkedIn guru, the relentlessly helpful. They're all things that do stick. And that is the difference. The fairy dust, the same thing. They stick and people remember them. They might even go back and go, who said that? Where did that come from? Right. They search and they, that's it. And, uh, you know, it, it, it works. So uh, I think sometimes that builds into your value proposition, doesn't it? So, your value proposition, your unique selling, um, your unique selling point, and those types of things. What makes you unique? And I think that sometimes people are a bit afraid to kind of venture off into this unique land that yeah. you know everyone else is going that path, and, and that, that venture down is this path that you're creating yourself. So there's that, a few that things that, that, yeah, that fear I think creates this uh, generic approach, right? I don't want to step on anybody's feet. I don't want to claim anything. I'm just going to be so generic. And then when you think about when do you ever buy generic product, right? You're having friends over for a game. You put out the Doritos bag and then you buy the generic and pour it in the bowl, right? (laughs) Serve the beer in that can that says beer. Don't show it to us. Well, it's, it's almost like, it's almost like if you want something to be done, really, it's like buying a mobile phone to take yeah. photographs. It can take photographs, it can record, but actually it's not not going to be the same as investing in some really good photogra- uh, camera equipment, you know, which is specific for that job. So let me just round up at the moment because there's some key messages coming out here. So Jeff is kind of saying, well, well why are you here on the platform? Be really clear about what your purpose is on the platform. It's changed over the years. It's definitely the platform to be on, you know, and think about, think about those messages. He's also mentioned about standing out, hashtag, and how useful that is. 
John has his own hashtag, Relentlessly Helpful, and has just mentioned a little bit about the algorithm. We're going to hear some more from Jeff and John. And Kevin has kind of pulled some of this together, really, because we're talking about branding, aren't we? You know, and I love the way that you kind of pulled it together, that it's either all or nothing in this in this profile, you know, but really it's about what value are you bringing? Why do people need to connect to you? And and it's really important because you can actually apply for roles and people look at that, don't they? They actually look at that discreetly. Sometimes there's um, roles that you can apply for and you can click the button and it it turns your profile into a into a CV or a resume almost. So these are the things that we really do need to be thinking about as well. When I was going to say, ultimately, you got to get John's book on uh, branding. Oh, absolutely. Well, they, uh, that's, yeah, that's where things it. begin on LinkedIn. <laughs> I've read it. I thought it was fantastic. I've given it to people. It's a great book. I oh, learned fine. a lot from it. Okay, <laughs> so we've got, we've got content DNA. Welcome, which... <laughs> I've never got a signed one. <laughs> we need to and, this, and this is part of the reason I don't want to know why I call John the detective John it's because of it's also because of the DNA bit you know you have to be a detective you have to be an investigator you know to be able to do that and a scientist to do all of those experiments so let's hear from a few a few more um we've got Stella uh, maybe a novice here but how do hashtags work are they powerful and valuable how to track and use uh not Probably not something we can answer in full here, but I'm sure these gentlemen will help you. Um, you're, you're someone in my network as well. I can reach out and help you too. I can say but quickly on that one, Tony, if she searches for branded hashtags and Esperian, yes. she'll find my article on that topic, which is basically the bit of content DNA that talks about this. And um Right now, the current best practice is to, to add something like between three and five hashtags into your post. Don't go mad on LinkedIn. Right. Leave them for the end and just choose. I would choose something that is popular for the industry, but also craft something for yourself so you've got something of the personal about it, something that belongs to you as much as a hashtag can. Uh, and that will help you with memorability, but also discoverability. Yeah, that, that's absolutely. in a nutshell that's yeah. what you need yeah definitely and i and it's not just just the hashtags because i call myself a critical no. friend and i know that i probably aren't i'm not going to come up on a on a search for critical friend it's not going to be one of the search words but hey that doesn't bother me at all because it's what i am and people will search me out and i don't mind you know creating my own path and so, um, can, can i add one thing that is related to all all we've kind of been talking about here as well, and I think also one of the strengths of the platforms is that the four people on this call, the four people in this show, all approach LinkedIn from a different perspective and do it in a different manner, which I think is one of the strengths of the platform. It allows you to do that. Now, there are certain best practices as it relates to hashtags or it relates to branding, Absolutely. you know, et cetera. But I think that one of the biggest strengths is the fact that we don't all have to do it in a cookie cutter fashion. Like That's right. The next person. Absolutely. We can all be ourselves on LinkedIn. We can all come at it from a different perspective. We can all serve different audiences. That we've, we've, we haven't talked about this here today, but I've talked about it many times in the past. The cooperative nature of the people that are on this call and that share things among one another is one of the biggest strengths of the platform I've ever seen because we all know there is no such thing as a LinkedIn expert it, and we all and, need to help one another from that. And, and one of the things I say as well is that LinkedIn is such a, you know, you can log on to LinkedIn and you can learn so much. It's, it's you know, it's, it's like the LinkedIn university. There are people mm -hmm. that have got so much experience. And if you think about the, the people in your network that you can really you know, so let's just kind of just think about that for a moment, because when I think about community and network, when I first came on to LinkedIn, what actually happened was I was doing my work around change and DEI in organizations. And I was just kind of telling little stories about this came up today and this is what it made me think about, et cetera, et cetera. And then people were reaching out to me saying, can you work with me as an individual? And I thought, well, actually, that's not what I do. But why go against the tide? And so I started creating, you know working with people on a one-to-one -one basis. 
But what actually happened was the word network community came in strongly because in the beginning, I had lots of people in my network that I could help. But who was helping me? So one of the things I say really consciously and loudly is make sure that you've got people in your network that you can help, people that can help you, and people you can collaborate with and get on and those types of things. Because when I first started 10 years ago, I didn't have that. And so I wasn't growing. And I was growing all these people and they were kind of getting up there. And so having a mixture of people that you can learn from, you know, network with, socialize, professional, I find that the mix is really good. I don't know what your take is on that, any of you there, really. But um, well, back to back to the back of the fact that there's no such thing as a LinkedIn expert, in my in, in my opinion. OK, it's one of those old sayings that says, you know, if you're the smartest person in the room, you're in the wrong room. Okay? <laughs> yeah. You know, because of the fact that I don't want to be the smartest person in the room. I want to learn. And that's a, that's why I get on LinkedIn practically every single day. I get out there to help people. But again, we all approach it from a different perspective. You get paid for what you do. Kevin gets paid for what John, what he does. John gets paid for what he does. I don't get paid for what I do. I am doing this literally as something that I love to do and as a, a give back to my local community and, and elsewhere. Right. Now, and Jay, I, you do get a lot of chocolate. Yes, I do. So, get a lot of I'm yeah. telling you, just, fortunately, I'm not going to get, get the result of chocolate <laughs> on my face anymore. Thank goodness. Okay. Okay. But, but, so, but, so, like you said, everybody kind of does it in their own way. And I think you've got to feel it through. And one of the other things I would say is you can't learn to swim unless you get in the water. So, yeah. you know, I, I was one of these people. I just dived right in. And um, I very early, I found myself in the middle of two big people <laughs> having a you know and I thought what am I doing and I didn't know how to get out of this conversation I was in this thread and uh, one of the things that my father always used to say that a cat shouldn't be in the middle of a dog fight and I thought <laughs> what the hell am I doing in this here I need to get out so I learned and a lot of the things that I've done I've learned through experience as well so Let's come back to um, to some of the things that we're we're really that we put on our agenda. Um, I realise that there's a few questions in there. We'll probably have to come back to them afterwards as well. But I just want to shout out to Michelle, Stella, Diana. Thank you so much for joining, Craig. Um, do reach out to everybody with your questions. I'm sure they'll be happy, more than happy to answer. Is that right, gentlemen? Yes. Absolutely. Yeah, you can uh, get some help on um, on that basis. So that's why they are here serving the platform. So before we move on, what I would like each one of you to do is, do you have a little story of when you first joined, something that you messed up on and how you fixed it? You know, do you have, I used to think that it was almost like being in a party and I was in one garden, I'd look over the mm -hmm. fence, there's this other party going on. And I used to think that everybody being tagged was a wonderful thing. Why am I not being tagged? And then suddenly I'm being tagged and I don't want to be tagged at all. But one thing I realized very quickly is that when I looked at it as LinkedIn as a party that I wanted to be invited to, I realized that I could wait a very long time for this invitation. If you see a conversation and you want to be a part of it, get involved, don't wait. Over to who, who wants to go first with their story? Well, I, I, I mean, I'm happy to take this one and, and just say that for me, I, I, as as Jeff alluded to earlier, I put all my eggs into the LinkedIn basket to try and grow my copywriting career. But as a former software tester, mm -hmm. I was just amazed at how weird the platform was and how many things were like broken or counterintuitive, and and that's what made me start writing some tips because I was learning as I was going and there, there weren't really any experts that I was aware of at the time who were explaining how everything worked. And I just kind of, I just laid bare all of that jankiness and said, guess what? When you do this and this, that happens. <laughs> Who'd have thought it? Uh, and, and, that, and that's where my kind of love for LinkedIn came from. It's that software testing background. But I joined in 2008 only because my boss at the time pretty much forced me to. And then I just laid dormant for eight years and did nothing at all with it. Okay. So 
that there'll be a lot of people out there who are just kind of waking up now on LinkedIn. And it's a very different place from probably when you joined. But um, don't expect to get chapter and verse from LinkedIn. You do need to look around and find some trusted voices who keep you know who spend all their day looking at the platform and understanding how it works and that that's probably where you're going to get your best insights from that's but right. my number one tip for people is to gather your own data if you can rather than just taking generic advice from someone else so you know don't don't bring opinions to a data fight you, you, you get your own data and if you know image posts are brilliant for you but everyone else says they don't I love work, that just don't bring do your opinions it. to a data fight. I, I absolutely yeah. love that. But we're going to hear more from you, John, <laughs> around data. I do want to come back to that. I know time's pushing on, but I'm going to come mm -hmm. back to that very shortly. So, so Kevin, have you got a very short story that you want to share about sure. an experience? Just because everybody thinks that you were all born perfectly, you see. <laughs> you all just landed and got it, got it right. So let's just show people that you're actually human and you've learned from some of your mistakes as well. So... What have you got to share, Kevin? Well, you know, and again, I joined back in 2005, February. I was in that first group of just under 2 million, right? They actually sent a letter out to us that said, welcome. <laughs> you know, oh. they don't send letters out to anybody now. And, and But the letters they send out now, actually, you don't want to get, right? <laughs> They're you're restricted. But, you know, through getting involved very early on in LinkedIn, I saw great value. It helped me in my career do several pivots because it was a platform that you had full control over the message that you wanted to present. Okay. And very few places on the internet gives you that opportunity. It's usually people talking about you, right? Here you had full control that you could actually put out there what you wanted to do. And I started uh, giving trainings to groups in transition. I still do this. Um, just free trainings. And, you know, those groups could be six, 700 people and just started to help them understand LinkedIn. And early on, I realized that LinkedIn was a database, right? And if you respect a database, you can become the perfect option within that database, right? And getting that knowledge, I think, helped me approach how I approach things on LinkedIn, but also how, how I teach people to use LinkedIn. So you've got to kind of know that piece. Things like market value titles, anywhere you type in on a LinkedIn profile and it has a slot and it has a drop down box. But the drop down box, it's actually LinkedIn trying to tell you this is what we call it. If you use this, people will find you, right? Almost like if you ran a grocery store and I sent you a product. And it didn't belong on any of the shelves, right? It's not on the end cap. It's not. A, it's on that shelf all the way back by the bathroom that's dusty and dirty, right? Because it has no category. So respect that. But then once you've respected the database, you've got to bring your personality into it, right? You got to. And that's, and that's where the brand, the branding, yeah. not blending, comes in. And that's that's so, really. Yeah, you've got two sides of that, right? You and and often you got to beat the bots in the process, right? And then you've got to please the people. And I have to say back to networking, that is the ultimate goal on LinkedIn. And, you know, my favorite saying is um, networking always beats not working, right? Whether Absolutely. you're looking for a job, whether you're looking for the next big sale, whether you're looking for a relationship. <laughs> and, and, and there you go. It, op it opens another another little um, place that we can wander down. But um, because what is networking? You know, is it about saying, hello, I'm Tony and I'm a critical friend and I'm a business mentor and I do all these things? Or is it Tony? I'm a mother. I'm a wife. I'm, you know, I live in Wales. I live, you know, or I live in London or wherever that is. You know, it's we lose ourselves behind our business. And I think that that is really important. You know, um, it's almost like I, I keep talking about this party. You know, maybe I'm party deprived, but I kind of think about LinkedIn as either a staff room where I pop in every morning and say hi to everybody. I might put a post out, pop out and come back in because that's where it, it happens in the staff room. Or look at it from the perspective of if it is a party and you open the door, someone knocks on the door and you open it, you don't want, want them, the first thing they say to you is, you know, this is my name and I want you to come to this event or, you know, I want to sell you my product. It's like, come in, let's get to know each other. So, so it's really how you see it. And I view it in very, very different ways. So um, I want to come back to John, though, about some algorithm and some 
analytics and one because it's one of my favorite things um boringly but anyone that works around me knows that um i don't want 10 page board reports i just want some graphs some data some narrative why is it dipped what we're going to do about it that's all i want so 10 graphs instead of a long wordy report does it for me it really does tickle my fancy and um so over to i want to hear a little bit more about the data and then yeah. hopefully we can get John and Kevin to chip in. But before we do that, um, Deanna saying LinkedIn is all about community. If you need help, ask for it. Surround yourself with the right people. And my husband says, if you hang around a barber shop long enough, you will end up getting your hair cut. <laughs> and even if you have no hair, you're going to get something done. You're going to have a cold shave or something, aren't you? Mm -hmm. So um, on that note... Think about who's in your network, who are the people around you. So over to you, John. What have you got to share? What's what's kind of like been coming up algorithm-wise? Because that's changed the analytics and everything. So can we spend a few minutes on that for a moment? Sure. I mean, a lot of people ask, you know, are impressions down? That, that's one of the top topics I always get asked about. And, and it seems that across the board, they are. And I think that's because the platform is growing and there's a greater chance that each new person coming to the platform is minded to create some content and there's only so much content that can be shown. So expect, oh, okay. expect reach to be down because of that, but it's still a great place for organic reach. Mm -hmm. um, if you want to look at your own stats, LinkedIn has got a, a new page, which is linkedin.com slash dashboard. If you go to that on your desktop, you'll see four, of the most important stats in terms of looking at the performance of your presence on LinkedIn. You'll see the number of impressions for your posts over the last seven days. You'll see the number of followers tracked over the last seven days. You'll see uh, the your number of search appearances, so how often people are finding you over the last seven days. And what I would probably argue is the most important stat, which is your profile views mm -hmm. over the last 90 days. So I always say that your content tells, but your profile sells. So if your profile is oh. optimized to, to, to put, pitch your flag in the ground, say, this is what I'm all about and this is what I offer, then it stands to reason that the more people you can get looking at your profile, the more likely you are to convert 1% or 2% of those people into customers. So that's where the money really comes from. So looking at your profile views and seeing how that changes over time is a great way of working out whether your content and your comments and your headline are optimized for discovery by the right people. Um, so, so those are those are some things to look out for in your stats. And if if you're not, if you're not gathering your stats, you're kind of a little bit rudderless. You, you you can't make any database decisions on what's working. Whereas if you are looking closely at what's performing well for you. So you can gather stats for individual posts, like how many reactions did that get? How many comments did it get? How many reposts did it get? You can work out what works and do more of those things so long as they're in keeping with your personal brand. For me, comments are still the king in terms of in get public engagement metrics because they signal more conversation. And LinkedIn, I treat as a, like you said, a, a party or a big networking room. And the more conversations you can have, the more likely you are to take those conversations. Into wow, the you're just dropping all the C's at the moment, John. So yeah. you're talking about comments. You're talking yeah. about conversation. We're talking about community. Jeff yeah. talks about coffee. You know, yeah. it's all the C's at the moment. And when I talk about compassion, okay, going to get that word in there. When I talk about compassion, I talk about community and communication are key in there. What are your C's, Kevin, that you want to throw in the mix? You know, I would say people don't realize often that, that LinkedIn functions like a microcosm of the world, right? What works in the real world actually works on LinkedIn. If you think about, you know, all those uh, tags in a, in a post, that's like the person you go to a meeting and all they do is name drop. They want to be associated yeah. with that, right? That's right. Uh, that's right. Somebody who throws junk at you all the time is always trying to sell you. That's if you, right. go to a, you go to a party and somebody's immediately saying, I've got the best insurance <laughs> possible. You're finding a way out, right? So what works in the real world actually works on LinkedIn. And I'm of a different opinion. I, I don't look at the algorithm as punishing us. I look at the algorithm as supporting what LinkedIn thinks 
our audience wants to see. So it's trying to help us get to the right place. But, you know, things like when, when somebody says, oh, selfies are hot, selfies are hot, right? And then you start posting selfies and all of a sudden they're not. That's because the people have gotten bored of them, right? And so they had this nice little peak because nobody was doing selfies. And all of a sudden they're doing them. They're, oh, that's exciting. And then now everybody's doing them, uh, right? Same thing with polls. Polls were something new again, although they were had them in 2013 as well. They were new and exciting and everybody wanted to do a poll. And then all of a sudden people were doing polls on your favorite bagel. And that doesn't, that's not why I'm on LinkedIn, right? You know, maybe, maybe on a Saturday I might accept that bagel, bag, bagel poll, but not every day. Absolutely, and so yes. it went up and then it goes down. Just like in the real world, if you eat too many bagels, you're going to want something else, right? And that's the thing is, is people don't get that LinkedIn works like the real world. I think the algorithm is there to help you get to the right audience and, you know, understanding what is it, what does an audience want? If and I think it's about making it work for you as well, because, you know, I've, I've changed the timing of my post recently because I had lots of U.S. audience and where I want to get out a little bit more with one of my offers I change the time because I want to connect more in the UK. So exactly. for me, I'm just always kind of altering things to just change it slightly or something happens. And I think, oh, what's happened there? And I go back and I research that. So really, um, just just taking on board what, what it is that you said, I think it's about, you know, watching what John's saying as well, watching the algorithm too, watching the stats. Sometimes you can manipulate it. Sometimes you can't. I don't know. But um, I try to do a little bit just based on some of the things that I pick up from you guys, too, and my experiences or what did I change? And um, I think that that's really important. Well, coming back to you, Kevin, one, um, one of the things someone said to me recently is, oh, you're really good at selling your products and your services and, and things. And I said, well, actually, let me correct you. I'm not good at selling my services. I'm good at selling me because what and what I represent, I represent all of these things, you know, reliability continuity and I think that sometimes what happens is see for continuity I love that by the way is that people start things and then they give up after three weeks because it didn't work and then they stop but what you need to remember is that continuity and the commitment to continue and give it a really good go is people are watching and that's part of your reputation isn't it so you know you're selling your reputation your credibility your reliability and all of that if you keep doing that is what builds trust. So let's talk about C for creator tools. So Kevin, I just want to kind of come to you because I love creator tools. I love audio. I love my LinkedIn live. They really, that's my C. Okay. Kevin, what have you got to say about creator tools and building your brand? And uh, what are creator tools for those that don't know? Yeah. You know, I think the whole concept of creator mode, right? That's where the tools are, was really LinkedIn's quest to give the audience a reason to come back to LinkedIn all the time, right? So they were stimulating creators. And the way they stimulated creators is they said, we'll give you all these analytics that you never had before. We'll give you these tools to access, right? And to present. And therefore, you'll create more content and more people will come to LinkedIn, that's also a, kind of a, a double-edged sword, right? Because they have created so many new content creators, we have now overfilled what I call the feed, right? And the feed is a funnel. So if you've got all these new creators coming in and they're dumping stuff in your funnel, you're going to get spillage. So you're going to miss some stuff, right? Because you can only pour so much through a funnel. Only the same amount's going to come out below and that's why everybody's like talking about, oh, you know, I'm not getting the exposure I should. It's not happening for me. And it's just because I think LinkedIn has created these great tools that have driven more content creation. Now, I think that's also been exasperated just recently with all these LLMs, chat GTP, uh, Bard, all this stuff has made mediocre content creators into average content creators. And they're filling up our feeds, right? You can definitely tell when there's tools you can you can go in there and look at that, but that's a whole other story. But the content creator tools, you know, I love things like newsletter. 
I don't post it every week. I don't post it monthly. I post my newsletter when I think I've got something important for people to see. And because of that, I've had good growth in my newsletter. I've also gotten really good response where other people say, I put a newsletter out and I get nothing. I get more each time. And it's because I'm only going to bother you when I've got something really cool. And I think that makes a big difference. So how you use the tool. It goes back to what Jeff was saying, that everybody uses it differently. Absolutely. You know, some, somebody said to me, "Why, you know, what's the purpose of your LinkedIn lives that you do weekly? I've been doing them for a couple of years now. And my instant response to them was because I enjoy it. I absolutely love it. And everything else is a bonus. I want to connect with my community. I want to connect with my network. I want to do that interaction. And, you know, so that's and what it, I think that around. It hmm? shows in your lives that you enjoy it, right? You're there because you enjoy, you enjoy community, you enjoy listening and talking with other people. That shows, that's part of your brand, right? And that's just the tool that helps and right you. Right now, it. I'm feeling guilty, Kevin, that we've got a million comments there and a million questions for you all. And we could be here until midnight and we can't even touch them, you know. But actually, I do want to shout some of those people out Marcia, Diana, Brenda, Dan, Ross. You know, I'm sorry that we can't pick up on some of these because time is running short on us, as you know, it always will do. Marjolaine, uh, Ryan, we've got Stella, Barbara. You know, I hope I'm not missing anyone out with all these shout outs here because you are very important to us and uh, all part of the community. And we appreciate every single one of you. You bring something to this platform and uh, we want to encourage you to get out there and show. Like I said, you can't swim unless you get into the water. And the thing about it is what's most important is that you have somebody that has, you know, a float that can help you or someone that can reach in a hand and haul you out. And uh, these are the things. And so with these esteemed guests that I have, time is running down on us. But I want to kind of, you know, just kind of round up by just asking um, Jeff, you know, what if you had a tip that you needed to share with people around this being the platform to be on, why it's it's more important than any any other, and you know anything around that. Have you got any tip that you want to share with anyone, please? I think your tip about you got to get in the water before you you know you got to get a little wet to do this kind of thing. You know, it, it's it's I, I equate LinkedIn sometimes to a gym membership, and I this is not my quote. I, I'd have to quote it from somebody else, and I can't remember who said it now. I, I apologize, but if you never go to the gym and you never learn how to use the equipment, it will probably not meet your goals. So, so you've got to actually get out there and do it. And I think the other thing that I would tell people is don't be afraid of it. Don't be afraid to make mistakes. You know, I know that all of the people on this call have made mistakes and learned from those mistakes and gone on to do something better from that as well. I mean, my final story on that one is people who know me know that I'm also a Star Trek nut. I mean, you know, Absolutely. John has quoted to me, you know, Trust the Force, John Luke, several times because I'm also a Star Wars nut. But the the point I'm trying to make here is that I none, none of us have, have, have gone completely from A to Z and not made mistakes. For example, one of my first pictures, of my profile pictures on LinkedIn was not even of me. It, I was treating it like Facebook, and it was a picture of Captain James T. Kirk. <laughs> well, this, this is it. I could tell you about my first article that I wrote and didn't write. I mean, I've still got it up there because yeah. for me, it's a memory of how rubbish it actually was and how far I've come. But since I res rescued myself from out of this this argument between two two um, two dot two people on the on the platform, yep. you know, quite often I'll go in and I'll see people in the middle of an argument and I'll say, "Get the hell out of that one." You know, because uh, it's not going to do you any good at all. Get out, you know, and uh, rescuing them. So quite often I'll be that hand and rescue them and get out. Otherwise, I can't help you when it goes wrong from here on in. Keep your nose clean. Thank you so much, Jeff. John, have you got a, a real tip or a short story you want to share while we wrap up? 
I, I think a combination of a really compelling opening 40 characters of your headline and lots of relevant commenting on other people's posts can open up the world of LinkedIn to people who would never otherwise have heard of you, but discover you by chance by seeing your comments on someone else's feed. So you don't need to be take on the pressure of posting your own content to start with. You can go and be thoughtful on other people's content and it's a great great discovery tool and it's still the number one way of of building visibility and engagement with others and if you reciprocate you know people will will come back to you and and, and that will come back to you in spades so optimize that headline and go and comment much more than you already are doing and it will really help you over time well that's really really great and i love the fact that you've been consistent with this seat of commenting you know, so uh, just in case you, 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 you're missing out or you missed that, John's saying, make sure that you comment, all right? And uh, it's going to get you in places where um, you need to be. So, um, Jeff, I'm going to ask you for your C now that we're doing Cs. I'm going to come back to C. So what's your C in a moment? But, Kevin, what's your one tip that you need to share, that you need to leave everybody with right now? It would be great if it was a C. It would be really <laughs> great. But it's okay if it's not. Gonna see. Um, yes, community, right? We're out there. This is social media. What you put on the internet stays on the internet, right? It does become part of your brand. Be careful flaming, arguing, you know, debate is okay. But be really careful on, on those other components. There's a great quote out there by Mark Twain, and that is, uh, never wrestle with pigs. You both get dirty, and the pigs love it. Right. So if you got a pig wrestler jumping into your posts and they're going, oh, you're absolutely wrong. You're an idiot. Blah, blah, blah. Don't go back and try to change them because they're not going to change. There is a great little feature. The three little dots delete. Right. Or even report and delete if they're really bad. Don't wrestle with pigs. That's, I think, the biggest thing. And then. And, uh, and so the C also could be keep yourself clean. Clean. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. Clean up behind you. You know, clean as you go. <laughs> Absolutely. And don't don't keep a comment like that on your post because you think, ah, oh, it's going to help me because I've got more comment. If it's really destructive, if it's not positive, it doesn't build energy, don't feel bad about deleting it. I, you know, I do that to protect my own audience. I don't mind a debate, but I don't like kind of this dirty process that some people no, get involved that's, that's in. And, and, Thank you. Yeah, don't play in it. Thank you so much. I totally agree. And um, I don't condone that. So we've got comment, we've got community, and we've got clean as you go. So Jeff, what's your C? Well, obviously, I'm all about C's because there's coffee conversation and, of course, chocolate. Mm -mm. Okay? But I think I'll pick the C that actually keeps things going and, and is a way that you learn most on LinkedIn, and that is collaboration. I have gotten to collaborate with so many people all over the world done 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 lives with people that are 16 hours ahead of me or, or as in today five hours ahead of me uh, it's just the best place to do that, that i've ever found and back to your networking party okay I, I have always described linkedin as a networking party that's going on 24 7 365 you could be here literally anytime you want and collaborate with those folks that you find out here absolutely and i think that too many people are focused on conversion rather than collaboration and building that community, which I think is really, really important and fundamental. Um, just to leave this here now by saying that it's so much easier to be yourself if you are not trying. So don't you don't have to try to be anything other than yourself. And uh, the other thing that I would leave you with is that don't chase the money, chase the result, because then if you chase the result, the money will chase you. So there's too much focus on the money, money aspect. Yes, it's important. Keep your eye on it because after all, we're all in business. But actually, you know, if you really focus on the result and compassion, then um, that's kind of where I'm going to leave this as well. So, uh, you know, Dan's in the comments talking about people dyeing their hair. So they're all getting on with each other in this party, <laughs> you know, that we've created here. All the C's, Craig saying all the C's and no chocolate. <laughs> Debbie saying that uh, loving the belief about buying, you know, buying your reputation rather than your product or, um, you know, your service. Uh, 
Debbie saying this was fantastic, loaded with value. See, I have got the best dons. And actually, you know, maybe for those donets that are out there that have got something to really shout about on LinkedIn, maybe I should have some donuts on here as well. So it's, you know, it's not so um, male orientated and, uh, you know, well, actually, I wasn't feeling intimidated at all. I just felt <laughs> quite at home, actually, in your in your company. So we've got Marcia. So, uh, you know, Nigel saying, great to be around the water cooler for an hour with you guys. Hopefully, I can get these people back again to give you some more updates. And uh, do reach out. Do reach out because they're relentlessly helpful, especially John, relentlessly <laughs> helpful. Jeff is the LinkedIn guru. He's been here forever and Kevin is going to help you to brand, not bland. And on that note, I just want to say thank you so much to Jeff, John, and Kevin. It has been a fantastic, I can't think of a better way to spend my hour right now than with all of you and all of you that have joined us. So hopefully I gave you a good shout out and um, thank you so much. So over the next few weeks, I'm going to be talking about networking. I've got some guests there. I'm going to be talking to people like Billy Samaya about audio, about audio, social audio. I've got Bobby Umar and Ella all coming on, talking about networking. I've got Corey, Corey Lopez Warfield talking about uh, his journey on here as well. And um, hopefully I'm going to have these, these back as guests on um, a little bit more of a frequent basis, I think. If I can, uh, if I can persuade them, maybe some coffee and chocolate. It's a bit early for Jeff, <laughs> but um, thank you so much. Thank you to everyone that's joined, and uh, see you all again soon. Thank Bye you. for now. Thank you for spending time with me and my guest today on Critical Reflections with your critical friend. Today, you got just a very, very small sprinkling of Tony's fairy dust. But if you'd like more, then do reach out for speaking or hosting. It's TonyMcClellan.com. For social impact, social justice or social mobility, check out our work at FirstLifeGroup.com. I look forward to hearing from you. In the meantime, feel encouraged, be inspired, be empowered and make a difference. Bye for now. Thank you.